And it's our pleasure on Newsmakers Week 2023 here on Bickley and Murata Mornings to welcome in the new head coach of the Arizona Cardinals for the first time we get to chat with him. Uh, and he's been doing a lot of chatting recently, uh, very busy with the media. Jonathan Gannon joins us here on the Arizona Sports Line. Coach, uh, I'm Vince. My partner is Dan. Welcome to the Valley. Congratulations on the uh, on the new gig. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, guys. Happy Friday. Yeah, same to you. Um, in this whole process, I, I thought the timing of the Cardinals co- head coaching search was very interesting from my outside perspective. And I know you had interviewed with Houston um, and the way it shook out and, you know, the story that you told about getting notified by Howie Roseman after the conclusion of the Super Bowl. Hey, you're sticking around to interview with the Cardinals. All that being said, with you sitting in, in your office now uh, as the head coach of the Cardinals, are you surprised that you're a head coach at, the, at this point? Did you think that maybe it was going to be put off into the future? Uh, yeah, I mean, a little bit, you know, I, I, obviously it's one of my goals. It was one of my goals to be a head coach. Mm -hmm. And, um, at the time when we went out to Arizona, the window, you know, kind of closed on me. I knew Arizona was still open, but didn't know I was going to get a chance to interview. So just like you said, you know, he, you know, we got done playing and how he said, Hey, Arizona wants to talk to you and you're not going to get on the plane with us and you're going to stay here and interview on Monday. And then, um, you know, uh, good luck to you. And, you know, obviously they want, they talked about trying to keep me, but, uh, so I stayed and interviewed and then, uh, ended up staying the night, interviewed some more on Tuesday and, uh, accepted the job. So that's how the NFL is. You, you never know what's around the corner. And, you know, I want our team to be adaptable, but coaches, you have to be adaptable to every situation, everyone's time frame, how those things out works a little bit different. And, um, you know, every job that I've gotten has come about in a completely different way. So I'm um, just really excited and thankful and grateful for the opportunity to talk to, to uh, Michael and Monty. And uh, glad it worked out. Well, you're checking a lot of boxes. Not only are you uh, saying all the right things, but you're saying it in, in a way that is resonating with a lot of people. It is kind of speaking to leadership and things that this program really needed. Uh, so let's start there. Let's start with accountability. I thought it was fascinating at the press conference yesterday when you talked about hot spots in meeting rooms. And I thought to myself, oh, okay, real accountability is coming to this football team. Elaborate on how are you, you are going to build that element of your culture. Yeah, you know, we just it's it's one of the it's a it's a factor that directly correlates with winning. You know, you doing your job at a high level and everybody has different roles or jobs within the organization. And I'm not just talking about the players. Like everybody that's hired to be an Arizona Cardinal, they have a role in helping the player maximize themselves. And um you you got to be accountable to that role because it's a it's a you know, a, a business that's measured on winning and losing. And, um, and, and that's okay if everyone understands their role and who they're accountable to. And, um, you know, you got to do your job at a high level for everyone to be successful. And, you know, I always talk about it with the, with the players. It's like, you know, it's easy for them to, to uh, understand you have to do your job so your buddy can have success doing his. And it's the same thing with the coaches, you know, the, the offensive line coach has to do a good job so the quarterback can do a good job with the quarterback and vice versa on defense. And you go through it all the or- throughout the whole organization, the strength program, the athletic training program, the director of psychology program. Everyone has a role in, in helping the players. You know, I, there was one time I got a question of uh, who's the most important person in the building? And – I, I answer the question as this, well, who's picking the players? And that's the GM, right? And then I said, okay, all right, all right, give me, give me another answer. And I said, honestly, whoever is helping the player hit their ceiling, those guys are all important. The, the head coach isn't any more important than the assistant DB coach or the strength coach or the, the head chef. We all have a role. Our roles are different. But we all have a role, and they're really all the same to me as helping the players maximize themselves. So that's how I really feel, and that's the culture we're going to have, and it's going to be high accountability. But I think it's easy to have high accountability when everyone knows exactly what their role is and what they're responsible for. Jonathan Gannon, the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals, our guest here on Newsmakers Week 2023. 
uh, about hitting ceilings. And another one of the things that you've really pushed out there is this this idea of adaptability uh, uh, on defense. We'll, we'll focus on that because adaptability is a, is a curious subject in particular to one player for a lot of Cardinals fans' minds, Jonathan, and that is Isaiah Simmons, who obviously is uh, worlds of talent. Uh, he struggled to find a consistent role in, in, in this defense for, for three years, but showed some flash this year. Do you Is there a plan for Isaiah Simmons? Do, do you foresee maybe just locking him in at one position, or, or how do you attack that? They'll, yeah, there'll be a plan for every one of our players, you know, and part of that adaptability that that it's kind of a loaded word and mm-hmm. i understand that but how it relates to players is this we need to get on the grass and get in the classroom and see what guys can handle and see what they can do physically as it relates to how we're going to structure the offense defense and special teams but then you really just want to find spots for guys to where they can you know really be really um thrive in the role that they're in so whatever role we put our guys in, whatever positions or whatever we're asking them to do, offense, defense, special teams-wise, we want those guys to be able to excel in those roles. And, you know, I've been around a lot of players that the what coaches were asking them to do, they weren't comfortable with. And that's some adaptability to that. You know, there, you have to figure out the medium of between, okay, well, here's how you can help our team win because that's most important, how you fit into the team. And then also we want you to be a really good player too and use your skill sets. And we need to do that as coaches, figure that out as coaches, what those positions are. So I'm really excited to work with Isaiah. I think he can do a lot of good things. And uh, But, you know, that that's going to take a little bit of time to figure that out. Just not Isaiah, everybody mm-hmm. on our roster. A- as you know, because you're a smart guy, Kyler Murray's uh, has become a polarizing guy in the Valley. There's some people who think the kid needs to be knocked down a peg. He needs to be told what's what. He needs to be told to get up under center. And then there are people who say, look, if you get him elevated and you get him to being the special force that he's been, you're a playoff contender right there. You hired Drew Petzing, who is, is a guy, guy that you've had on your radar for a while. Why is he the right guy? And if you don't mind, give us a look at how you are going to elevate Kyler Murray. Yeah, so, you know, what I was looking for in the offensive coordinator position was really a guy that's been in multiple schemes. That was one of the first things that I thought about, hey, you know, how do I want to how do I want the offense to look as the head coach? And really that was for this is, you know, if you've only been in one scheme your whole life, that's what you know and that's okay. A lot of people do a really good job and are highly successful with their one scheme and how they do things. But with, when you figure out with when you have one scheme, you have to fit those exact pieces in perfectly. And in my opinion, in the NFL today and where the game is going, I think that's part of the adaptability. You have to be able to adapt your, your version of what, how you're playing offense around your players. So it's not, it's not I kind of use the term like, hey, guys, Here's the book. Here's the playbook. Learn it. This is what we're doing. I, I don't like that. I really don't. I think it should be, hey, guys, who, what are our players can do? Who are our players? Who are we playing against? Okay, from what we know and, and our systems as far as what we install and what do we have our disposal, what tools can we use to attack a defense or an offense or special teams, as it relates to our players' skill set, that's how I wanted to play for the Arizona Cardinals. That was my vision for the team. And um, I just know that Drew's been in a couple different systems. He's been under some really good play callers and coaches. And just seeing his path go through, you know, as he cut his teeth. And, you know, I think he started in the league in 2012 and kind of worked his way up. He's coached tight ends. He's coached receivers. He's coached quarterbacks. Um, he's detailed out with a run game and offensive line play. You know, you got to know it all as a coordinator, you know, and he's not going to be strong everywhere and you got to, you know, help help him out in certain places, but just as his vision for, hey, here's the schemes I've been in, this is how we're going to use Kyler. It was very appealing to me and, you know, on top of that, I knew that he wanted to be a cardinal and uh, what I was looking for in all of our coaches, he has both of those qualities. 
You mentioned yesterday that that accountability, discipline, these do not have to be negative things to players and that and that your players are going to feel the difference from you as a coaching staff. And yet uh, most people would say that if you give a football locker room too much rope, that they'll abuse the privilege. So where do you draw the line? Uh, Mark Schlereth, whom we both know very well, says a head coach is going to have to at some point in time instill a little fear. They have enough power to, to really kind of get guys laser focused at all times how do you draw that line what do you think about that yeah that it, that's not hard for me as long as you're honest and transparent but basically for anybody in this world right you give them a role you tell them hey this is what i need it to look like and then if it doesn't look like this we have to adjust and when it does look like that if you do have a day where hey this is exactly what we're talking about if you keep doing this you fit into the team and we will win games, then you praise them and you love them up. But when it doesn't hit that standard of what we set for them, then we have to change our behavior. So it's really just defining what winning behavior looks like on a daily basis as it pertains to all five aspects that the players have to maximize themselves and hold them accountable to that. And players want to be coached. They want to be held accountable. They want to improve their game. Uh, And really, we want those guys to be able to really motivate them to do that for, one, the team, and two, themselves. I want to see all these guys become great players. And certain guys have different goals. You know, certain guys that I've been around, hey, I want to be a pro bowler. Hey, I want to be a starter. Hey, I want to play 10 years. Hey, I want to be a backup on this team. Hey, I want to make the practice squad. Hey, I want to make $100 million in my career. That's all fine as long as your priorities are the team first and then you. Yeah. And that's what we will stress to our guys, and that's what we're going to hold them accountable to. And, yeah, well, you listen, you're off to a real impressive start, my man. I thought it was even more impressive that everybody on that in that locker room wants to play you one-on-one in basketball. <laughs> and when you told me yesterday, you can still throw down, you can still dunk, which is good. <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like I will say this, you guys. I feel like I'm doing a lot of talking right now. The last 24 <laughs> hours, I'm actually not. I'm actually. I'm really. This is. This might. I don't know. This might uh, fool you a little bit. I kind of live by the mantra of speak softly and carry a big stick. So I, I'm not a big talker, to be honest with you guys. I, I want to get to work, and uh, the proof is in the pudding. Good. Well, thank you so much, Coach, for uh, look joining us. To that pudding. <laughs> yeah, appreciate it, yeah, JJ. Can't wait to see what this all looks like. Thank you so much for joining us. So we appreciate my, it. So does my two-year-old. I'll tell you that. <laughs> see you, man. Thanks, Jonathan. <laughs> thank you, guys. I appreciate you, man. Look forward to talking again. Yes, definitely soon. Jonathan Gannon, head coach of the Arizona Cardinals.